Shalom on the Sabbath day. Shabbat Shabbatov. My brain is not functioning at a very fast rate of speed. Been having a little technical problems with the recording system, so we're trying to get that all straightened out. I think we've got it ready. It took us a couple minutes to get it to start. So today is the seventh day of the fourth month of the year 5780. It's also the 11th day of July 2020 on the Gregorian calendar. We're going to continue our expository teaching in the book of 2 Chronicles. We're going to begin it on in chapter 6, verse 1. And But before we get started, we're going to turn towards the east where the temple was, which we have been talking a lot about, and where it's prophesied to be again in Jerusalem. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. Father, we praise you for you, your protection that you have upon us, that hedge that you built up around us and kept us from harm, Father, in this time of plague. We ask that you would uh, heal those that uh, need to be healed. And we ask that you would comfort the families that's lost loved ones, both in this pandemic of the COVID-19 and for in all other manners. Father, we just ask that, again, you protect the, the brethren and also those that are being called to the brethren. Father, we ask that you would, again, anoint each one of us with an extra portion of that Ruach HaKadosh, that Holy Spirit of promise, that you would teach us all things through your word, your logos, which is the Ruach HaKadosh. We ask that you would, again, Bless us and teach us. We ask it all in your precious Son, Yahushua's name. Amen. Ooh, get warm all of a sudden. Don't know why. It's not warm in here. It's not warm in here. I feel kind of a little warm. So, But anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and get as much of this uh, down as we can. We're going to start 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1. Then said Solomon, Yahuwah had said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. Okay? And we know Yahuwah is light, so he dispels darkness, but this is what he said. But I have built a house of, inhabit of habitation for you and a place for your dwelling forever. Now, we know that Yahuwah didn't come down in there. You know, there's no way that uh, a house built by hand, human hands are in this earth could hold Yahuwah, okay? But his Ruach, which is his glory, uh, was what would come down and rest upon here. And this is it, it, his spirit. It's Yahuwah's spirit that comes down inside the tabernacle, okay, or the temple. Verse 3, And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. So he prayed for them and said a blessing upon them. And all the congregation of Israel stood, okay? And he said, Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spoke, spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, or Dawah. Now, his mouth, again, is his Ruach HaKadosh, his Holy Spirit. That's the messenger or the Malach of Yahuwah, Okay. So that's what it means by he said with his mouth to, to my father Dawid, saying, it's in red in this sword Bible again, King James Version. Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house, build an house in, that my name might be there, neither choose I Cho uh, neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Okay, but I have chosen Yer Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen Dawid to be over my people Israel. Now Solomon is over him at this time, but this is son of da Dawid. Okay, so still, you know. I'm trying to think of a good word. Symbolically, that's the word I'm looking for. Dawid is still ruling over his people Israel. And now that our Mashiach, or Messiah, Yahushua, 
is picked up that moniker, okay, he now is still ruling over the people, Dawid, symbolically, okay, because son of Dawid, okay, verse 7. Now it was in the heart of Dawid, my father, this is Solomon speaking, to build a house for the name of Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. But Yahuwah said to Dawid, my father, now he said it through his mouth or his uh, ruach, okay, his spirit, for as much as it was in your heart, Dawid's heart, to build a house for my name, you did well in it that it was in your heart. In other words, it meant a lot to Yahuwah that it was in Dawid's heart, okay, Verse 9 says, Notwithstanding, you shall not build the house, but your son, which shall come forth out of your loins, he shall build the house for my name. And later on, Yahuwah spoke that it would be Solomon. Okay? Verse 10, And Yahuwah therefore hath performed his word that he has spoken, for I am risen up in the room of Dawid my father, or in the place of my father Dawid. Okay, Dawid, my father, then and am set on the throne of Israel as Yahuwah promised, and have built of the house for the name of Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. Notice it keeps saying for the name, because he knew that Yahuwah wasn't going to be in that house. It couldn't hold him, okay, Yahuwah. That's why it keeps saying the name. Verse 11, and in it, have I put the ark, or the we know which is, wherein is the covenant of Yahuwah? So it's the ark of the covenant that he made with the sons, not the ark, but the covenant that he made with the sons of the men of Israel. Verse 12 And he stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands, just, just like we would if we were getting ready to pray. For Solomon had made a brazen scaff scaffold, okay, of five cubits long and five cubits wide and three cubits high, and had set it in the middle of the court, and upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward the Shamayim, or heaven, okay? Verse 14, and said, O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, there is no Elohim like you in the heaven, nor in the earth which keepest covenant, and showest mercy unto your servants that walk before you with all their hearts. That's the condition, that you walk before him with all your heart, not partially, okay? You can't say, I want to do it today, I'm not going to do it tomorrow, you got to do it with the whole heart, okay? And he showeth mercy unto his servants. Notice it says that. That walk before him with all their hearts. So if you're not with all your hearts, there's no grace. Okay? In that, if you're not doing it the best you can. That's how you do something. With all your heart is doing it the best you can. Where everything in you wants to be pleasing in Yahuwah's sight. That's what that's referring to. Verse 15. Thou which has kept... You which has kept with your servant Dawid, my father, that which you have promised him, and spake with your mouth, again, his mouth is the Ruach HaKadosh, and has fulfilled it with your right hand, with your hand, not right hand, I added that, and your his hand again is the Ruach, that's the power of the Most High, okay, as it is this day. Verse 16. Now therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, continue with your servant Dawid, my father, that which you has promised him, saying. Now, this is what the Ruach said as he delivered what Yahuwah said. There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that your ben, or sons, take heed to their walk, but to their way to walk in my law or my Torah, okay, that's what the word law here should have been translated, in my Torah as thou hast walked before me. Verse 17, 
Now then, O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, let your word be verified with you, which you have spoken unto your servant Dawid. Verse 18. But will Elohim in very deed dwell with men on earth? Behold, Shamayim, or Shaman, Shaman the, the, the heaven, and the heaven of heaven, Shamayim, cannot contain him. Again, he's reinforcing that Yahuwah himself will never dwell in this temple made by hands because it cannot what? Contain him. Okay? And that's so important to get to understand the relationship between his Ruach or his spirit and he himself. Okay? How much less this house which I have built again can't be done. Verse 19. Have respect therefore to the prayer of your servant and to the and to his supplication or his appeal. O Yahuwah, my, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, to listen unto the cry and the prayer which your servant prays before you. Talking about itself, Solomon. Verse 20. That your eyes may be open upon this house day and night. Notice, he, even though he's not there, that his eyes would see it. Okay? Upon the place wherefore thou ha you have said that you would put your name there to listen unto the prayers or to hear the prayer which your servant prays toward this place. Again, or actually that could have been instead of toward in this place at that particular point in time. Verse 21. Listen therefore unto the appeal or prayers of your servant and of your people Israel, which they shall make or pray toward this place. Now this time it's talking about toward. That's the reason why we turn to the east when we open in prayer. It's just in obedience to this. That doesn't mean if I'm facing west, and I'm praying continually in my mind that Yahuwah doesn't hear me. But we need to practice turning towards the temple because of Scripture. Okay, that's why. Hear you from your dwelling place. Now, where is his dwelling place? It's right in the next thing. Even from the from Shami, Shamiim, or, or from Salem, is what it will be an English translation. And when... You hear, forgive. Okay, so he wasn't in the temple. He was in the Shamayim or in the heavens. Okay, and he and he's asking for him to hear and forgive, which is what grace. Okay, it's not a new concept. Okay, verse twenty-two. If a man sin against his neighbor, this is no different now, and an oath be laid upon him to make him promise. And the oath come before your altar in this house. Then hear you from the Shamayim, okay, from heaven, and do the judge, and and do, and judge your servants by repaying the wicked, by punishing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous. By giving him accordance to his righteousness. Okay? That's, that's just, that's justice. Okay? And in that, there's still mercy. Okay? Now, he will at one point give judgment without mercy. But remember what it said hear and forgive. Okay? And that's what he did. And he did, he was long suffering with his people Israel, but they were long obstinate and stiff necked and turned from him. To the point of rejection. And don't think that we can't do that today just because we're under Messiah's blood. You can't really be under his blood unless you've turned from your sin. Okay? Repented. And that means to start doing like you're supposed to do. Okay? Then you can be forgiven for your past sin. But if you continue in sin, so grace may abound, may it never be. Because it can't be. Okay? According to the scripture. Okay? Verse 24, and if your people Israel be put to the worst, 
before the enemy because they have what? Sinned against you. See, as long as Israel kept his com they kept their commandments as a whole, okay, they did their best to do that. He protected them. He would send out his ruach and or the hornet or whatever name he placed upon it at that time, and he would fight for Israel through his spirit, his power, okay? And shall return and confess your name. See, that's what they got to do. They have to return. They have to turn from their evil ways and come back to Yahuwah's ways or towards righteousness and confess his name and pray and make appeal before you in this house. Okay? They had to come there to do that. You don't have to do that now. Okay? Because you have the Ruach living in you. That doesn't mean we still shouldn't turn toward the temple symbolically. Okay? That means really do it, but in, symbol, in, in symbolism. Okay. Verse 25. Then hear you from the Shamayim, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou givest to them and to their fathers. Notice he said bring them back, because he knew that they were going to be cast out. But they have to repent and return to Yahuwah. <coughs> and this was always a mixed multitude. It wasn't just physical Israel at this time either. Anyone that would keep his commandments, be circumcised, and keep the keep the Passover and the, all the rest of the set apart times, okay? That they became Israel, they were absorbed into Israel, they intermarried in Israel. Okay. So then, hear you from the, so if they would come to his house at this time, and generally they did this. During uh, the, day, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, okay, they would come and they would repent and annually, but they would do that more than just annually. They did that every time they brought a sin offering, okay? Verse 25, then you hear from the heavens and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them again into the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. 26, when the heaven or the Shamayim, is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you. Yet if they pray towards this place, if they weren't there, you know, because they only came there during the feast. Okay, that's when they came to the temple. But the rest of the time they were there. So when they would pray, they would turn towards the temple. Okay, toward this place and confess your, and confess your name and turn from their sin. There's the key. That's what you have to do. That's true repentance. When you stop sinning and start following the ways of Yahuwah, when you do, do afflict them. Now, the day of affliction. That's what he's talking about here. You know, the day of atonement. But that's just, that day of atonement of affliction, okay, also is returning about the time when they're cut off and they're in the wilderness, Okay. That's all symbolic. Verse 27, Then hear you from the heaven, or the Shamayim, and forgive the sin of your people, of your servants, and of your people Israel, when you have taught them the good way, which is his Torah, wherein they should walk, and send rain upon your land, which you has given unto your people for an inheritance. If there is a famine in the land, if there be Plague, if there be blight or mildew, locust or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or, or affliction or whatsoever sickness there be. Verse 29. Then what prayer or what appeal soever shall be made of any man or of all your people Israel, when everyone shall know his own sore or uh, punishment or whatever, you know, I can't think of the right word, so we'll go on. <laughs> okay. So ever, of all your people, 
when everyone shall know his own yeah, whatever, and his own grief, that's what we're talking about, okay? Persecution, that's the word I was searching for. He will know his own persecution and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house when he comes there for the feast, okay? I don't know why that word was escaping me, but it was. Okay. Verse 30. Then hear you from the Shamayim, your dwelling place, and forgive and render unto every man according to his ways, whose heart you know. This is added here from all the way to the end of this verse. For you only know the hearts of the men of men sons of men that they may fear you to walk in your ways so long as they live in the land which you gave us unto your father now this is one time where the word reverence here does fit fit a little better than fear now there's absolutely wisdom in the fear of the most high and you know we should fear his repercussions if we don't do it but we should respect and love him and want to be pleasing in his sight so, so that they may reverence you to walk in your ways so long as they live in the land which you gave us unto your fathers. Now, see, that's what Yahuwah wants. He wants us to reverence him in such a way that we would obey him. It's not just being feared that he's going to destroy you, but you would love and honor him in such a way that you would obey him. Verse 32. Moreover, concerning the stranger, the foreigner, the one that's sojourning among you, which is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country, for that for you, your great namesake. So they came, those uh, foreigners or, or sojourners or strangers that came here because of Yahuwah. Okay? And your mighty hand, so in other words, they'd seen what he had done, and your stretched out arm, mighty hand, stretched out arm, is his spirit, his ruach, that was performing the will of Yahuwah. If they come and pray in this house, if they come here, they had to be circumcised. They couldn't, you know, just walk in there and pray in that house. They had to pick up Yahuwah. Verse 33, then hear you, you from the Shamayim, even from your dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger asks of you, for that all people of the earth may know your name and reverence you or fear you as doth your people Israel, and may know that this temple or house which I have built is called by your name. Okay, whether you pronounce that and you think it's Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yehovah, it's talking about the name of the Most High. Okay, verse 34, if your people go out to war against your enemies by the way that you, are, that you shall send them and they pray unto you towards this city which you has chosen and the house which I have built for your name. Okay, verse 35, then hear you from the Shamayim their prayers and their appeal and uphold their cause. Okay, and that he says answer their prayer, uphold their cause. Verse 36, if they sin against you, for there is no man which sinneth not. That was added, but that's certainly true then and now. Okay. And you be angry with them and deliver them over before their enemies and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Now, Solomon knew this was going to happen. Moshe knew this was going to happen. He prophesied that they would rebel and be cut off. And this is what he's saying. Okay? Verse 37. Yet if they take thought in the land where they are carried captive and turn and pray unto you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, and have dealt wickedly. If they repent, if they turn from their wicked ways, 
Verse 38, if they return to you with all their heart and with all their self, soul, here meaning their self, in the land of their captivity, captivity, where they have carried them captive and prayed toward their land, which is Israel, which from here is east, and Jerusalem being the capital city, which you gave us unto your fathers, and toward the city which you have chosen, Yahuwah has chosen, and toward the house which I have built for your name. Verse 39, Then hear you from the Shamayim, even from your dwelling place, their prayer and their appeals, and, their, and uphold their cause, and forgive your people which have sinned against you. That's a prayer that he will always answer. But there's conditions to that. Just can't, he's just not going to forgive them because they haven't, re, uh, uh, you know, repented. Okay, verse 40. Now my Elohim, let I beg you, your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place or toward this place. Now therefore arise, O Yahuwah Elohim, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Yahuwah Elohim, be clothed with salvation. And let your saints rejoice in goodness, O Yahuwah Elohim. Do not reject the face of your anointed. Anointed. That's what they called our Messiah, the Anointed One. At this time, he was referring to himself as the Anointed, and also the people of Israel. Remember the mercies of Dawud, your servant. Chapter 7. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, now listen to, what this, what, to this very closely. The fire came down from heaven, or Shamayim consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of Yahuwah. Not Yahuwah. The glory of Yahuwah filled the house, which is the Ruach HaKadosh, that's his spirit. And the priests could not enter into the house of Yahuwah because the glory of Yahuwah had filled Yahuwah's house. Filled it. And when all the men or sons of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of Yahuwah upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised Yahuwah, saying, For he is good, for he is mercy, his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahuwah, before the glory of Yahuwah. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two or twenty two thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of Elohim. That's why they call it the house of Elohim. It belongs to him and his spirit. And his spirit is what comes down. That's the glory. The Ruach is what filled that house. Okay. Verse six, and the priests waited on their off on their offices, and the Levites also with the instruments of music of Yahuwah, which Dawid the king had made to praise Yahuwah, because his mercy endureth forever. Yahuwah's mercy. When Dawid praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of Yahuwah. So he, went, he set it apart, the house of Yahuwah. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, there were too many, and the meat offerings and the fat. Verse 8, also the same time Solomon kept the feast seven days. 
and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering in or from the entrance of Hamath into the river of Egypt. Okay. And in the eighth day, so what feast were we keeping here? Tabernacle. Okay. That's yep. Sukkot. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. Now that's talking about the first seven days is the feast, and then on the eighth day they had a holy convocation. Okay. The seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles was not a holy convocation. It's not a good day that you had to gather, but they were gathered for the feast, okay? But they didn't, it wasn't a, a regular feast day. Now, because it says solemn assembly, some here will try to say that that means that they didn't have food on that day. I can't see that in the scripture, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't say anything of the sort. But it says on the seventh day they had a holy convocation, a solemn assembly. Look that word up, solemn, in the Hebrew. It's festive, okay? Not not with your face down, festive. It's supposed to make his Sabbath a joy, okay? That's what he's talking about here. And on the third, and on the third, or on the twenty-third day of the seventh month. He sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in the heart for the goodness that Yahuwah had showed unto Dawid and to Solomon and unto Israel his people. See, we need to remember this on the Feast of Tabernacles as well. You know, the dedication of the temple. You know, and knowing, understanding that we now are the temple of Yahuwah because his spirit is within us. And as we celebrate the days of of Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles, we need to recognize that the, the, the purifying of the temple. Okay? This is the first temple. We'll read later about the second temple. Okay? Later on, as we keep, continue to expositorily teach the uh, entirety of Scripture. So, glad and merry in heart for the goodness. That Yahuwah had showed unto Dawid and to Solomon and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of Yahuwah and the king's house and all that came unto Solomon's heart to make the, in the house of Yahuwah and in his own house he prosperously affected. Verse 12. And Yahuwah appeared to Solomon by night. Now he appeared through his Ruach, his spirit, and said unto him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. He's accepted. If I shut up the Shamayim, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to be to devour the land, or if I spend, send pestilence among my, among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, or Shamayim, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place or toward this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified or set apart this house, that my name may that be be there forever. Now, that didn't mean that he would be there, or even his ruach would be there forever. His ruach would come down upon that, his spirit. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Verse 17, And as for you, if you will walk before me as Dawid your father walked and do according to all that I have commanded you and shall humble and shall observe my statutes and my judgments or my decrees and my Torah. Verse 18, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom according as I have covenanted, covenanted with Dawid your father saying there shall not fail you a man to be a ruler in Israel. Now, Dawid wasn't without sin. 
We all know that. We've read that. He's he's he he had his weaknesses and his most kind, but Dawood's heart was always towards Yahuwah. Whenever he was would realize that he had sinned, he would turn from his sin, and and Yahuwah would forgive him. And that's what he was asking of Solomon. But if you turn away. He's warning Solomon here, and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I set before you, and shall go and serve other Elohim and worship them. Then will I pluck Israel up by the roots out of the land which I have given Israel. And this house which I have consecrated or set apart for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And that's happened. It happened with the first temple. It happened with the second temple. But, you know, in, in the end, it won't happen to the last temple. Verse 21. And this temple which is exalted shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath Yahuwah done thus this unto his land, unto this land, and unto this temple? And it shall be answered, because they forsook Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and adopted other gods, and work or other Elohim and worship them and serve them. Therefore, hath he brought all this evil upon them? Okay. Trying to see how much time left. Chapter eight. And it came to pass at the end of twenty years, wherein Solomon had built the house of Yahuwah and his own house, that the cities which Huram had given to Solomon. Solomon built them and cursed, I mean, not cursed, and caused the men of Israel to dwell there. And Solomon went to, to Hamath Zobah, Hamath Zobah, and prevailed against it, or fought and won against it. Verse 4. And he built Tadmor, or Tadmar, in the wilderness, and all the storage cities which he built in, ha in Hamath. Five. Also he built Beth Horon, the upper, and Beth Horon, the, the lower, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars. And Baal, Baal, Baalath, and all the, the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the chariot cities, and the cities of the horsemen and all that Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and in Lebanon and throughout all the land of his dominion. As for all the people that were left of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which were not of Israel, but of their Ben or sons who were left after them in the land whom the Ben of Israel did not destroy, did Solomon make to pay tribute or make them into a type of slave. Okay, uh, not a slave, but almost. They were indentured servants unto this day, unto the day this book of Second Chronicles was written. Verse 9, But the men of Israel did Solomon make, no, uh, but the sons of Israel Solomon did not make uh, slaves or indentured service for his work, but they were men of war and commanders of his captains and captains of his chariots and horsemen. And these were the eldest of king, or, or the chief or the captains of, of King Solomon's offers, officers, even 250 that bear rule over the people. And Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of Dawid into the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of Dawid, king of Israel, because the places are set apart where the ark of the covenant, I mean, of the ark of Yahuwah hath come. 
So in other words, he knew this woman shouldn't be there, okay, even though he was marrying her. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto Yahuwah on the altar of Yahuwah, which he had built before the porch. Even after a certain rate every day, offering every day, notice that, offering according to the commandments of Moshe on the Sabbath, on the new moons, and on the solemn feast three times in a year, even in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, okay, there's another place where it doesn't just say, you know, Shabbat or Pentecost, but the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the three times a year that need to be pointed out. The Feast of Weeks starts with the Day of First Fruits, okay, or the Wave Sheaf in Leviticus 23, and ends with the Day of Shabbat or Pentecost. That's the Feast of Weeks, and that's the three times a year. This is the clearest place that it's written, okay? Now, notice they were offering burnt sacrifices at those times. So that means they had fire on the Sabbath day, doesn't it? Okay? Now, that doesn't mean they kindled that fire on the Sabbath day, but they had fire on the Sabbath day, and they cooked because the, the priests ate of the sacrifices. Think about that. Let that soak in. Verse 14, And he appointed, according to the order of Dawid his father, the courses... Okay, he appointed the times when the priest would serve, that's what they called their courses, of the priest to their service and the Levites to their duties, to praise and to minister before the priest as the duty of every day required. The gatekeepers also by their divisions at every gate, for so had Dawid the man of Elohim commanded. And they departed, or they de de deviated not from the commandment of the king unto the priest and the Levite concerning any matter, matter or concerning the treasures. Now all the work of Solomon was prepared from the day of the foundation of the house of Yahuwah and until it was finished. So the house or temple of Yahuwah was perfected or finished. 17. Then went Solomon to Ezon Geber and to Eloth at the seaside in the land of Edom. Okay. And her and her ram sent him by the hands of his servants, his servant's ships, okay, and servants that had knowledge of the sea. So all the way back here to Solomon, they had knowledge of the sea. They were sailing and they went forth and they went with the servants of Solomon to Ophir and took from there 450 talents of gold and brought them to King Solomon. So King Solomon was sailing the seven seas way back then. And not only him, but even the Edomites were doing the same. Okay. So. They were sailing. There was even people believed that Solomon was here in this country, America, in the United States and probably Canada and all over the place. That's probably where he got a lot of the gold and silver and things that was so plentiful that the silver was used in the streets to pave the streets. Okay? So he was sailing the seven seas. Chapter 9. And when the queen of Sheba... Okay, we know who the queen of Sheba was, Ethiopia, had of the fame of Sol heard of the fame of Solomon. She came to test Solomon with hard questions at, Jer at Jerusalem with a very great company, and camels carried and camels carried spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she came and, and when she was come to Solomon. She spoke with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon answered her all her questions. And there was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not. In other words, he didn't keep anything to himself. He told her everything she asked. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built, I'm sure which she's talking about the temple, she saw it, 
Doesn't mean she went in it at that time. And, okay, verse 4, and the food of his table. Find that one, okay. And the butlers of his servants and the attendants of his ministers and their apparel and his stairway by which he went up into the house of Yahuwah, there was no more spirit in her. In other words, no more of her own attitude left in her. Okay? Verse 5, And she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom. Nevertheless, I believed not their words until I came and my eyes had seen and behold the one half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. For you exceeded the fame that I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, which stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be Yahuwah your Elohim, which delighted in you to set you on his throne to be king for Yahuwah your Elohim, because you your Elohim loved Israel to establish them forever. Therefore made he you king over them to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices, great abundance and precious stones. Neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. There was, there was so much and all the different spices and, and the servants of also of Huram and the servants of Solomon which brought gold from Ophir brought algum trees and precious stones and the king made of the algum trees steps to the house of Yahuwah and to the king's palace and harps and lyres or psalteries for singers and there were none such seen before in the land of Yehuda. Yehuda, that's the name, that's the land of Yehuda is Judah, and that is the place where he places his name. Okay, that Yehuda. Verse 12, and King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatever she asked, beside that which she had brought, brought unto the king. So she turned and went away to her own land, she and her servants. Now the weight of the gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score or 666 talents of gold. Beside that which traders and merchants brought and all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold, 600 shekels of beaten gold, went to one large shield. Verse 16, and 300 shields made he of beaten gold. 300 shekels of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the, of the forest of Lebanon. 17, moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold, which was fastened to the throne and stays or arms on each side of the sitting place and two lions standing by the arms. Almost like any chair like that would that be like a captain's chair or a throne. That's where that comes from. Okay, the arms to rest your arms on. And twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other, upon the six steps, there was not the like made in any kingdom. There was nothing like that in any other kingdom. And all the drinking vessels of the king of King Solomon were of, of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was not anything. It was not considered valuable in the days of Solomon. See, how valuable something is is how 
little there is of it. The less there is of it, the more valuable. There was so much silver in that time that they paved the streets with it, okay, like we do stone today, okay? Fort 21, for the king's ship went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram. Every three years once came the ships, or ships of Tarshish bringing gold and silver and ivory and apes and peacocks and King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom okay so he was down they were down in Africa for sure that's where they were getting the apes and, and peacocks and other things of that nature you know there was a lot of things going on at those times they think King Solomon's minds were in Africa, for sure. Okay, and all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that Elohim had put in his heart. Okay, and they brought every man his present, vessels of silver, vessels of gold, and garments, weaponry, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year certain amount year by year 25 and Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king of Jerusalem and he reigned over all the kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt Solomon was they had all voluntarily submitted to him. And he had took some by force. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones, as I said, as common as stones. And, and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees. In other words, he brought so much in. There was as many as the sycamores, which were plentiful, that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt and out of all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet and in the prophecy of Ahiah the Shelanite and in the visions of Ido the, the prophet or seer concerning Jeroboam the, the ben of Nebat? And Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of Dawid, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, or his ben, reigned in his stead in Jerusalem. We know who reigned in the north. That was Jeroboam, the, Nebat, the son of Nebat, or the ben of Nebat, reigned in the north. Ten. I've got a little bit more time. I think I'm going to jump one more short verse here. It's short. And Rehoboam went to Shechem. To the, for to Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, or the ben of Nebat, who was in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt, and they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made your yoke grievous. Now therefore ease you somewhat the grievous servitude of your father. Okay? And he and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve you. And he said unto them, Come again. And unto me, after three days, and the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that had served Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give you me to return answer to this people? You know, Rehoboam, I mean, uh, saying, Okay, Rehoboam obviously wasn't the smartest guy that ever walked down because he first he did the right thing. He went to the first his, the, the the elders that served his father and asked their idea. 
But we know we're going to read on and see that he didn't listen to them. Okay, like a lot of younger people sometimes don't do. Okay, verse seven. And they spake unto him, saying, If you if you be kind to this people and please them and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. But he forsook the counsel which the old men give him and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him that stood before him. And he said unto them, What advice give you that we may return answer to this people which has spoken to me, saying, Erase somewhat the yoke, or lift somewhat the yoke that your father did put upon us. And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shall you answer the people that spake unto you, saying, Your father made your yoke heavy, but make you but make you it somewhat lighter for us. The, this shall you say unto them. My little finger shall be thicker than my father's writ waist. In other words, he's going to put it on a lot harder than his father Solomon did. Verse 11. For whereas my father put a heavy burden upon you, I will put more to your bird, to your yoke. My father chastened Chast chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions or whips with metal tips. That's what he was talking about, like a cat of nine tails. Come again to me on the third day. And the king answered them roughly or harshly. And King Rehoboam forsook the advice of the old men and answered them after the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke or burden heavy, but I will add thereunto my father, chastising you with whips, but I will chastise you with a cat of nine tails or uh, whips with metal tips, scorpions. That's what he's talking about there. Verse 15, So the king listened not to the people for the cause or for the turn of events, was of Elohim, that Yahuwah might perform his word, which he spake by the hand of Ahijah, the Shelanite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king would not listen unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in Dawid? In other words, they weren't bloodline of Dawid. These were the ones that he made those uh, uh, servants, uh, slaves like of, you know, of that. And, and they, all they wanted was him to lighten up a little bit. But he said, I'm going to make it worse on you. They don't have an inheritance with Dawid. So why should they serve him, Rehoboam? And we have none inheritance in the son of Yesi, which is the father of Dawid. Every man to your tents or return home, O Israel. And now Dawid. See to your own house. So all Israel went to their homes or to their tents. But as for the men of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Yehuda, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram that was over the forced labor. Okay, that's what these guys were that he told, you know, listen, I'm going to make it harder on you. And Israel rebelled against the house of Dawid until the day this book was written. We're going to stop it and call it right there. We'll start in chapter 11 next week. This will be part three. This was part two today, if I fail to mention it. And if... If you will, please go back on our YouTube page if, you, if you're there and hit subscribe. If you're not there, go back. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button on the video if you would. Leave any comments, concerns, complaints, whatever in the comments section on the, on the video if you would, please. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.